Yes. I think uh, on the nutrition side of things, so Lee Wanhua or uh, Giga Chad, as he's effectively known, moved up in weight class and quite significantly. He was an 89, now he's a, a 102 at Worlds. Was there anything in that process that was quite interesting? You know, because we were only looking at him today and he's still peeled. He's still got visible abs as a 102, which even for elite weightlifters isn't very common for 102s, you know? Yeah, he's... Well, he's... Uh, he's he's a he's a good soul. He's a very good soul. But I remember when he started like gaining, because I was I was working with him, and I was like, man, and you got, like I really wish you weren't doing this. This is so much more work for me. <laughs> I was like, you're so it is so much more work to move you around because like when he was eighty nine, like he was like he was Superman. Like he was he was like like pretty much exactly what like a body type you probably want. And then now he gets so big. I was like, man, this is. Like taking me an extra thirty minutes to do what I was doing before, and my thumbs are hurting now. I've got like arthritis in my elbows because of this. But he, uh, yeah, he, he, he's like, I hate being big. Like he's, he's always like, man, that's like it's so much nicer being smaller. It's like, it's like I, I he just keeps grabbing his fat. Just, just so much fat. Just, I just wanted to be muscle at all. Me, uh, uh, but, he, but like I said uh, earlier, was. He basically eats an extra plate of food. He for the accessory work, like weightlifting accessories, he do he does more sets. Like they they know volume leads to more muscle. So their training plan is basically the same. But then he ups the sets. He adds three to four sets of the accessory exercises. He'll get two to three more sets of squats in before he switches the lift. Like it'd be basically he just ups his volume during that build stage. So he's a lot more tired. So then people like me have to work harder. <laughs> and help him recover so he, he can feel better about it but yeah like uh, that bulking and he's not he's not there yet uh like you can see it. he's at world so it's not a secret so like you could tell he's not quite at the 102 level but i, I wouldn't be surprised if he still has this strong visible abs at 102 because I, I don't think he, he would tolerate not having it did did he encounter any problems that were unexpected or did he find you know hitting a certain position was difficult and you were like okay your shoulders are too big to get the bar behind, you know, and it does sound silly, but sometimes you do see lifters mobility suffer as they get heavier rack positions deteriorate. Um, you know, some things improve, of course, like lower body control and proprioception gets a bit better at weights, but did any kind of unique problems pop up or anything that posed difficulty for you or a bit of, uh, maybe abstract thinking to try to fix it? Generally, when it comes to a lifter who's gaining weight is anything that's felt a little bit compressed before. So if you had like a, a shoulder that was a little jammy, or if your low back gets a little bit tight after like heavy pulls, when you gain that weight, that compressed feeling feels worse. Like at the bigger you are, there is more compression. And especially if you're getting bigger muscle wise, like there's just so much more power that's going to compress that area. So anything that was like kind of small, like became a lot more. So we have to, but we know that. So we know that as you gain weight, you're going to feel more compression. So we do a lot more decompressive type drills. So a lot more traction drills, full range of motion is always promoted because once you gain weight, the leverages change. And if you don't work on maintaining that range, you could lose it very easily. So he's working lots of long range of motion stuff. We're decompressing his low back, his hips, his knees, even if there's not a problem, you know, preemptively doing drills to work on that. So decompressive, like you can do hanging stuff, but like, uh, like everyone loves like a little reverse hyper. They don't use a lot of reverse hyper stuff, but like that's like that type of drill where there's a little bit more of a traction to the joint as you load it, it's going to feel better on the joint. So for the shoulders, there's pull-ups are going to be more comfortable because it, the, that distraction of the shoulder ends up being good for them. Um, so we use a lot more of that. So luckily, cause I'm a. I'm not a big guy, but not in the good way. I'm a big guy. So when I, when I, I've gained like quite a bit of weight for lifting. And so I know that kind of personally. So when that, when he told me he was gaining weight, I was like, all right, instantly I was like, we're decompressing the shit out of your body. Cause I was like, you're just gonna feel beat up. And then every time I saw him, he's like, man, you're right. It's like, this is, this is hard being heavy. Like, like we're I was doing a treatment on the seventh floor. And then he's like, man. I can't climb seven floor. Like I'm waiting for this elevator and I ain't going up those stairs. I was like, yeah. it's elevator all day for him now. 
and for those cattle. Like them taking stuff. I, I haven't seen any of them really want to take a lot of stuff with the caveat, of course, I'm a foreign expert and I, if there was anything, they probably wouldn't tell me. Um, yeah. So I usually know because locals I've been on podcast talking about stuff. So it's likely to show me anything. 